Hello, everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of The Seditionists. Um, I'm Rob Furman. I'm here with my colleague and dear friend, Keith Reeves. We are uh, thinking about rebranding this TV show, as we had mentioned in the last episode. We've had some suggestions on some good uh, new titles and things like that. I'm also going to put a, a link here on, on the page for you to go and, and uh, go to our Google form and put your suggestions in as well. Uh, the more interactivity, uh, the better it is for all of us and certainly in its enjoyment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to, to our channel here and stay up to date on all the latest topics that Keith and I discuss. Uh, finally, if you have any topics that you feel uh, you would like to hear Keith and I debate, discuss, argue, whatever the case may be, um, please feel free to put those down in the comment section as well, and we'll get to those uh, in, during this season of The Seditionists. Uh, Keith said that he's uh, feeling a little rambunctious today, <laughs> so I uh, we, we picked a topic that's going to hopefully keep him uh, calm and cool and collected, but you know that never happens. Uh, so the topic for, for, for this particular conversation is the craze that is Pokemon Go, the game. Um, I want to start by putting a disclaimer on here. I don't know anything about Pokemon. I never in, got into Pokemon. Uh, my son, however, I think owns every little Pokemon figure you could possibly buy and every game you could possibly buy. Uh, I never liked them, never got into it, don't buy the cards, don't care about the game. Um, but I do play Pokemon Go because my son does. And I sort of always made it a rule that I'm going to at least experience everything that he chooses to play so I have an understanding of what it is. Um, there's a lot of debate out there about Pokemon Go being a good thing, a bad thing, and that type of thing. So let's hear what uh, Mr. Reeves has to say about the matter. <laughs> Keith, welcome. Howdy. Well, unsurprisingly, I think it's awesome. Um, and from an educator's perspective, anything that has the kind of buy-in that Pokemon Go does, to me, it's a teachable moment and a teaching opportunity. Granted, I'm an education nerd, just like Rob, so we're always thinking of things through the lens of being a teacher. But I think the reason that we should pay attention to this is for the exact same reason Rob said that he pays attention to it as a parent. If that's where our kids are, then that's where we need to be. Right? I think that's a fundamental premise of educational technology. If it's being used at scale by kids, we owe it to ourselves to understand it. How can we capitalize upon it? What can we use in our classrooms that may tie to it? And even if you eschew it and you say you're not going to use it in your classroom, you owe it to yourself to have your finger on the pulse of student culture. You know what I mean? Now, I'm you know, involved in virtual environments. I have been forever. Those of you who are, who are regular VISTA attendees or know my work in virtual environments know that I, I spend a lot of time with games. I've been a fervent believer in not just gaming as a, a you know, quality thing to do with part of your life, but teaching with gaming and gamification, two very different things. Um, I, I've always been an advocate of that. If I can find a way to use the enthusiasm and engagement that comes built into Pokemon Go. When my kids walk into the classroom, they're excited like crap about these things. Keeping my finger on the pulse of that, being able to, to reach out and make any relevant connection I can is inevitably going to be an advantage to me as a teacher and as a curricular designer. It may be as simple as something like I have a Pokemon case, so my kids know that, you know, oh, hey, you play the game. Even if it's just the psycho-emotional connectivity of saying that person understands something I care about, that's good to begin with. And on top of that, me being a thoughtful educational practitioner and wanting to design lessons that take advantage of it, we, I think we'd be crazy not to, you know, take advantage of this thing. I really do. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And and um, I, I got two comments to that. The first thing is uh, the the naysayers, mm -hmm. uh, and and that, that gets me very frustrated because it feels like we can nothing can ever happen right. There, no one can ever stop and say this is cool, this is fun. Let, let's go with it. If it, There's always those naysayers out there. So now all of a sudden they're running around, they're not paying attention, this type of thing. That's the same group that was so desperate to get the kids out of the house and moving. Now someone's created a video game where I can't keep my kid in the house. Yep. He wants to run around <laughs> the park all day, every day. And, 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 and people are still complaining about it. Those of you that are into physical education and health, you should be promoting this game like no other. Absolutely. Because all of a sudden, every kid wants to go out and run around, which is exactly what we've wanted them to do. That's my first point. 
Point number two, this is going to be a bridge for future games just like this. Yes. Can't you see some history major making something like this? Instead of chasing Pokemon, you're going to national landmarks. You're learning about famous things that have happened in this location or that location. And the idea of the gamification of collecting these badges, in this case, you're collecting Pokemon, being just as addictive. What do you think about that, Keith? You're 100% right, Rob. I mean, first of all, I, I love that you cited the HPE thing. Um, there's been compelling research. To, uh, there used to be a game, it was way, way popular for a long time, called Dance Dance Revolution. A lot of people may remember this. They had the pads, and it would show you forward, back, left, and right. You'd have to step in time and dance. Entire groups of kids were in physical education classes learning, in this case, across curricular curriculum of uh, music and physical education. Uh, West Virginia University did a tremendous study on this. That was a phenomenal example of taking advantage of something that kids were doing recreationally, bringing it into the school and not making it stolid and stodgy, but we're already doing the stuff we want you to do. Let's formalize it and talk about it, do it together and give kids an opportunity to do it who may not have an opportunity otherwise. That was an excellent thing to do. This is the same premise, right? I, I'm completely in agreement that if like, let's go out and we're going to go all the way across this park and back and we're, maybe we'll, we'll sprint on the way out. We'll go in teams on the way back. I don't know. Let's talk to the HPE experts and ask them what uh, literacies and what skills do we need to embed into this activity, but we'll use Pokemon Go as the overarching framework. Completely agree HPE people should be cheerleading like crap for this. Second of all, again, nailed it. Rob's absolutely correct. This is a gateway, right? First of all, it's a gateway to other forms of gaming that can have tremendous educational relevance. But also, this is going to be an initiator of a huge surge in augmented reality. Now, the executive director of Visti, Karen Richardson, who uh, Rob and I know real well, um, had this great blog post recently, and I'll find it. We'll link it in the comments, but basically said, Pokemon Go, been there, done that. Because people have been advocating for augmented reality for like a decade. And finally, something comes out and kids go, oh, my God, it's awesome. Well, yeah, it's always been here, just not in this beautiful package that had all the right marketing behind it. And it was a subject material, a subject matter that really appealed to kids. This is the first huge explosive AR title for kids. But it ain't the first AR title, and it will not be the last. We owe it to ourselves to stay current with this stuff. Absolutely, and and, I, and let me be the first to applaud the uh, company, whoever makes these this this game, because the the back end of this game has just has to be ridiculous how complicated it is. But what an amazing, amazing game! And I have to admit, like I said, I don't know Pokemon, I don't like my Pokemon, but I'll be dang if I'm not out there right with my kid in the park trying to catch those Pokemon. There's a, there's a certain addiction to this thing and a certain bit of fun. Um, People, let's not be so close-minded about these things. We can Amen. do a lot with this stuff. I mean, just think of the, of the math that you can get involved with, uh, hit points and all those different things that, I, that I've been reading on there, the evolutions and how many points you need in order to evolve and all these type of things. I mean, the, the opportunity for conversation is where these games come into play. So don't close your mind off all because, oh, it's Pokemon, or, oh, it's a video game, or... Uh, here's one that I'm sure we're going to hear very soon. We can't do that. It's outside. Well, you know what? Come on. You use your use your creativity. We talk about that being a 21st century skill for our kids. Teachers, use your creativity. Play this game for a little bit and figure out how to make it work for you because that's going to make you relevant to your kids. It's going to gar guarantee you your kids are going to be paying some serious attention to that lesson because this is going right down their alley of where their brain is. You Keep. said it, man. You know, uh, take elementary math teachers. I got turned off to math real early as a learner because I wasn't being met where I was. I didn't have a natural aptitude for it. Now, I guess there's a brief asterisk I want to put in here, and I blogged about this recently. Um, I actually had a colleague tell me not so long ago that this person is of the belief that some kids can't just learn math, so we shouldn't bother trying to teach them. I was horrified what? by this idea. Like, that's an anti-educator thing to say. I was blown away by it. I want to be engaged where I am. I need that, right? I write about relevance all the time in my work. 
if you're an elementary math teacher and you're not using this as your authentic context for teaching algebra and things like that, I don't know what the heck you're doing. I was listening to a group of kids. They couldn't have been 10 years old in Falls Church, Virginia, just recently. And one of the kids asked, well, how many candies do I need to, rev to evolve like 20 rotatas? And they said, okay, well, it's 20 rotatas, it's 25 candies, do the math, 400. And they sat there and they're calculating algebra in their non-scholastic time for fun to facilitate. Well, if you're going to put up a question on the board, 32 times 8, you could just as easily say it costs 32 candies to evolve 8 Pokemon. How many candies do you need? That context is not irrelevant. I'm constantly shocked when I hear people say, they're like, well, it's stupid, it's the same math. But it's a different context, guys. You're looking for an authentic context by which kids are practicing their skills. Find the authentic numbers from the game. Ask your educational technologist. Heck, get in the comment section below and ask us. But use these as your authentic context. You're immediately building in buy-in and engagement that you will not have otherwise. I'm not saying you couldn't do it with a different authentic context. But there's nothing more powerful than Pokemon Go right now. Why would you not use that? It's a huge shot in the arm. So I'm really genuinely surprised by people that will naysay, as Rob pointed out, oh, no, 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 it's a game. I don't like Pokemon. Pokemon's stupid, and I want kids to have their phones away. You're just taking potential engagement and just throwing it on the floor for no reason. I think that's sad. Absolutely. And, and uh, let, let's hope our, our, our teachers and our, and our students continue on moving with this Pokemon. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. I, I just sent an, uh, an email requesting that they put a gym here at our school. Yeah, so, uh, nice. I'm not sure if they believe me when I said I was the principal and I'd like to have this. I think maybe they thought I was nuts. But yeah, right. Uh, but you know, just to even just to even bring that to a theoretical point, and then I'm gonna I'll let you clear, clear clean this up for us. But why shouldn't we have one of those virtual gyms right here at the school? The one thing they teach you is your school should be the hub of your community. It's yep. where you it's where you should where it should be the center point where you've got your events, where you have your community, where you've got your parents coming in, your kids coming in. It should be the hub of the community. So my point is that why shouldn't we have a virtual gym right here for the Pokemon Go uh, aficionados and lovers of the game? Because I want you to come to my building. I want this to be the hub of the community. All right. I'm Rob Furman signing off. Keith. I'm just so thrilled that you said that, Rob. You're exactly right. And uh, to finalize that point, if we're going to have kids out in the community, don't we want them to do it in a place that's safe, that's well monitored, that's well lit, that's well patrolled and populated by passionate, caring educators that want to be parents with or partners with parents and families? Yes, I think we do. So I'm Keith Reeves. Thanks very much, everybody. See you next time.